Um, let's talk a little bit about the, the blind pools. The Bond Street mm -hmm. deal uh, and purchase of uh, Premier American, does that send a signal that the FDIC is willing to embrace these blind pools? It does. It uh, was very well received by uh, the market and by investors who are looking to invest in blind pools and, and people are really looking for a sign that uh, we're at the end of the development process and that these pools will actually be able to bid successfully and this is really the first one that's made a go. It wasn't a huge deal, but it was a deal, and that's very important. Do you think that we'll see um, a, a wave of these deals in succession now? Uh, I think you'll see, uh, I'm not sure it'll be a wave, but you will see more and more coming. Uh, the blind pools are better situated to buy smaller banks, to pursue a roll-up strategy, uh, to try and build a platform within a region using you know, sort of odds and ends of small failed banks, and so I think well, the, uh, the available supply, the coming supply, will be perfectly suited to the blind pools. And now that uh, we have the breakthrough transaction that shows that it can be done and the FDIC will approve it, I think you will see more, uh, you know, maybe an accelerating uh, amount of these deals over the next couple of years. It's my understanding there are about 15 to 20 of these blind pools out there? Uh, there's, there is, uh, I, I'd say, at least a dozen deals that I know of that are still very actively out in the market seeking to raise funds. Uh, you know, they, each one has a slightly different business focus, maybe a different region, uh, different management teams, obviously. But there's there's easily a dozen deals still in process, and I think many of them have, good, have a very good chance of succeeding. 